Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Math 100. This is a video. In fact, this is the only video for section 5.3, a rather short section. Now, in the book, this section may not be short, but we are going to cover this very lightly uh, because this uh, section has to do with graphs and charts, uh, most of which you are familiar with, I believe. All right, so let's get started um, with uh, section 5.3. Section 5.3 is entitled Describing Data, all right? And how do you describe data? Well, sometimes you can just list the numbers, but many times, because most people prefer visualization or visualized uh, information, um, they prefer to have data presented in terms of a picture, such as a graph or a table or a chart sometimes even a picture called a pictograph, All right? So we'll take a look at those things. Um, the main questions are, how can I describe data? And perhaps more importantly, how can I interpret or construct or both graphs and charts, all right? So there are many, many different types of graphs, graphs and charts. Uh, we are going to just do a couple and um, hopefully, you know, that would uh, help you um, or get, help you get started in exploring other types of graphs and, and charts, okay? Number one, data is hard to interpret if presented only as a list of bunch of numbers, all right? So uh, what happens then is that data is often presented in tables, graphs, and charts. Here's an example. How many times have you visited New York City? Ask the teacher, ask the teacher to his class. And these are the answers. 0230621911 All right, so what do you make of this? Okay, it's kind of hard to read this or interpret this, right? So what one does is to uh, construct a table. And the first thing I do is to do a frequency, to construct a frequency table. And I will show you exactly how that's going to happen. And then we will uh, draw a bar graph for this. All right. So the first thing here is uh, let's go ahead and construct what is known as a um, frequency table. All right, not hard, okay? And in fact, if I didn't tell you anything more in this section, you can probably figure out how to do this. All right, so here we have two columns, number of visits. Okay, what's the least number of um, the visits that you see here? It's zero, right? And zero happens, okay? And in fact, let's go ahead and um, write down all these numbers. You see, you have zero, one, two. I don't see any four, I see three. Uh, I don't see any five, I do see a six, I don't see seven or eight, but I do see nine, right? Okay, so uh, over here, we write the frequency. Now, a lot of times, you know, you use these little um, counting symbols, right? Like zero, okay, so let's say zero, you do one little, um, little bar here, and then you have two, three. So far, we have taken care of this. You have another zero. Let's go ahead and cross this out. And then you have six, two, one, nine, one, one. So that's one, one, zero again, and three, two, and zero. Okay. So once you have these uh, tally marks, you can tell this is four, this is three, this is three two, one, one, okay? Four, three, three, two, one, one. And at that point, you may just erase this thing, right? All these tick marks or all these tally uh, symbols. All right, so this result is called a frequency chart, right? Now, um, again, this is okay, but it's not very uh, easily understood or interpreted, right? So, um, another popular thing we do in presenting data is to draw a graph. In this case, probably it's most appropriate to draw a bar graph. Okay, now if you use a software programs such as Excel or uh, any kind of a spreadsheet program, uh, usually uh, those programs come with ways to uh, 
to graph these uh, data okay, numbers. But here, I'm going to do this manually just to show you how it's done. And if you already feel like you know how to do this, you can watch this part quickly. All right, so you have frequency. You see numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm going to include 4 and 5 even though we know that four and five do not occur in this four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And the reason I do this is just so you know that which ones are not um, occurring in this list of numbers. Okay, so um, one, two, three, four, the highest number I already know is four. And so you draw a bar like that for zero. And for one, you have this, height three bar, right? And that's three, two, one, okay? And then for three, I have, let's see, this, this, this. There are two people who said three. Nobody said four, nobody said five. There's one person who said six, and then nobody said seven or eight, nine was the answer for one person. So here, this is called a bar graph. Right? And this is the bar graph that represents the number of times the students visited New York City in this particular class. Right? Uh, so visuals help us interpret, or you can say understand the uh, data, right? Okay, next, uh, let's look at uh, this this thing. What is that? It says a graph or a chart that's in, in a circle. Uh, shape. Okay, uh, you probably know this is this is uh, called a what? Because each piece looks like a piece of pie. It's called a pie chart. Okay, pizza chart. Maybe another way of saying this, but it's referred to as a pie chart in general. Okay, so tell me what you can um, interpret or understand from this. It says the title is a vehicle color um, involved in a total. Uh, in total loss collisions. So these are the cars totaled in uh, accidents, right? You have green, red, black, white, blue, and gray. So let's see if you can make some statements about or from this pie chart. Okay, so what can you learn? Uh, can we learn from this? All right, so you can say green is the most common color. Right, because uh, 52 uh, green cars were totaled in accidents according to this chart. All right, and then uh, followed by red, black, oops, what is that? Red, black, et cetera, right? Uh, green, the 52 green cars were totaled in accidents. Right. Oh, by the way, uh, according to this table, see, you see how this green piece, uh, this is not quite, but almost one fourth, right? It's like 90 degrees, not quite 90 degrees. Uh, so it is one fourth, and that means uh, about approximately a quarter or one fourth of the total cars are green. So that is a disproportionately many, okay? And so that's what you can tell. And that is, I mean, we can tell this, one fourth because of the uh, central angle angle of the green piece, which is close to 90 degrees. Okay. And now the chart, you know, it, pie charts are like analog clocks, uh, especially, uh, I don't want to date myself, but the people who grew up with analog clocks most of their lives, uh, it's much easier for us to look at the analog clock because we know our brain tells me when you see uh, 90 degrees, that's 15 minutes. And when you see uh, 120 degrees, that is uh, 20 minutes and so on, right? So, and you can never do that with the digital clock. So, all right, uh, next, uh, what can you say? Red is uh, second most common. I say that second most common. But black and white are also fairly close. Okay. And blue and gray are much less frequent. And this kind of uh, data could perhaps uh, help you choose your next car, maybe. 
I'm a little surprised, you know, because green is such a, a visible um, and bright color that uh, people should recognize, oh yeah, the green car is coming as opposed to like gray cars, you know, it's hard to see sometimes. But according to this, green cars are the ones that get totaled most often. Okay, one last thing I want to mention uh, before we uh, close this section is uh, pictographs, all right? Uh, some visuals could be misleading. Now, not every pictograph is misleading or deceptive, but sometimes it is, okay? So look at this picture and see what this is trying to say. The manager's salary is like this and the worker's salary is like this in one particular uh, company, okay? And, and this is a kind of picture that you will see like, for instance, in the newspaper article, All right? So what's wrong with this? Well, maybe nothing's wrong with this, okay? But uh, often uh, there is some sort of a, a misleading not misleading information explicitly, but something could be misleading. Okay, so for instance, when, um, here, let me just explain what's going on. This pictograph, or picto, yeah, pictograph, or pictograph, sometimes called pictogram, sometimes called a pictograph, is supposed to indicate the salary difference okay, between what and what, uh, between a manager and a worker, right? So that's pretty easy, uh, but it is unclear uh, what that difference is. Why is it? Okay. It looks like if you look at the height of the manager's bag and the worker's salary bag, it looks like this is twice as much, right? The height is. So the height of the manager's bag appears about twice as much as the other one. So the, um, the person who illustrated this may be indicating that the managers make about twice as much money as the typical worker, okay? But you know something, you know something from uh, section uh, uh, 2.3. Um, so let's say in section 2.3, we learned that here um, in this case, because we're talking about the volume, um, you know, how much money is contained in this bag opposed to this bag here, right? If this has twice as, if this is twice as tall and the same shape, uh, what is the ratio? What's the difference between the manager's salary or the volume of this money bag compared to this uh, money bag? In this case, the manager's bag uh, has a volume eight times as large as the other bag. Remember that? That's because two to the third. So when you talk about the capacity or the volume, let me just go ahead and make a point here. This is two to the third, and that's eight, right? If you look at these two bags, you may you may see two, twice. You know, you may see that the manager's um, bag is twice as tall as the workers, and that may be what the person is trying to indicate. But if you look uh, just you know, uh, intuitively at these two bags, this one looks much bigger. And in fact, uh, geometrics, geometrically speaking, the volume of the manager's bag is eight times as much as the worker's uh, bag. And so the illustrator may be actually, you know, aware of that fact, and maybe it is, the, uh, the ratio is uh, eight to one, but um, the height itself is two to one. So it is uh, confusing and we don't really know which one's right. Okay, so uh, many times the pictograph or the pictogram uh, is not very clear and uh, uh, it's ambiguous at best. So be aware um, of that kind of a subtle difference. Okay, and that's pretty much all for the uh, section. And this section is uh, 5.3 and you have a uh, little exercise on your quiz to make free, a frequency table and a bar graph, and then you calculate the uh, percentage and so on. And then there's another exercise on the quiz to interpret what a pie chart is trying to tell you, right? So you should do this on the paper and then go to the online quiz for section 5.3. And that is it for 5.3. Aren't you happy when the lesson is so short? Okay, well, 5.4 uh, and 5.5 would be more lengthy. And uh, in fact, uh, they will be more mathematically oriented. 
Okay, I will see you at section 5.4. Have a wonderful day and take care.